Hello YouTube community and welcome to the Explode Your Quotes series, where we take quotes from the text that you are studying and blow up individual words and phrases in order to analyse them and make interpretations. I use the term explode because it requires you to blow up language into smaller pieces and helps you to pinpoint word classes and really think about the writer's choices of language and the effect these individual words have on us as a reader. This time I'm helping to break down key quotes for Sherlock Holmes. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. So we'll be looking at the sign of four, which was written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and it's his second novel featuring one of the most famous fictional characters, the consultant detective Sherlock Holmes. Over the course of this video, I'll provide you with a series of key quotations for the character of Sherlock Holmes, and teaching you how to analyse quotes at word level. So let's get started. Watson is the narrator of The Sign of Four, and we learn a lot about Sherlock Holmes through his perspective or through characters' dialogue with Holmes. At the beginning of the novel, Watson describes Holmes administering cocaine. He states that he has seen him do this three times a day for many months, and how he couldn't reconcile his mind to it, and was becoming more irritable at the sight. As a doctor, Watson is aware of the negative effects of drugs and is concerned about his friend's addiction. Holmes himself is aware that its influence is physically a bad one, but chooses to do it because he finds it transcendently stimulating. Without work, Sherlock Holmes' mind does not feel whole. Therefore, he turns to drugs to fill the void. So I've taken, give me problems, give me work, I abhor the dull routine of existence, I crave mental exaltation. So remember, explode the quote requires you to blow up the language into smaller pieces. During this process, you should zoom into particular words or phrases from the quote and identify the word classes, the denotation, which is the meaning, the connotations, which is the associations with the words, the effect it has on the reader, and the writer's choices. So let's zoom in on the word give. First, pick out the word class and the denotation, the meaning. So give is a verb and can have various meanings. For example, to place something in someone's care, or it can mean to administer medicine. So in Sherlock Holmes's case, both meanings could apply. He feels that he needs to be given the problems of others, he needs a case or work to stimulate his mind, and he doesn't have that, he needs the artificial stimulation that drugs give him. Here we have looked at the connotations, the associations we make with a word in relation to the text. Now, let's look at the effect on the reader and the writer's choices. Dole may have chosen to begin the novel in this way and use language like this to show Holmes' addictive personality. While he has great powers and a masterly manner, like Watson expresses, he is still a man who can succumb to addiction. He can also show how unbalanced he is without work, suggesting that his job is all he lives for. His work gives him life. See how much you can say about one word or phrase? This is analysis. You need to be able to say a lot about a little to secure top grades. Now why don't you try unpicking the rest of the quote using the questions I've given to you. Pause the video and give it a try. So the first quote looks at Holmes' addictive and unbalanced personality without work. The next quote shows how logical he can be when he does have work. After meeting with Miss Morstan and hearing about her case, Dr Watson expresses to Holmes that he finds her attractive. Holmes replies with, A client is to me a mere unit, a factor in a problem. The emotional qualities are antagonistic to clear reasoning. So it's over to you. Zoom in on particular words and unpick the language. Why does Doyle choose to use words like unit and factor to describe a client? How does this prove Watson's point of Holmes being like an automaton, a calculating machine? Why shouldn't a detective feel emotions towards a client or a case? How could it stop them from having clear reasoning? And why is it important for a detective to have clear reasoning? How can viewing people in this way affect Holmes' social interaction with others? Think about his relationship with Watson, for example, and draw on other moments in the text. So write out the quotation in your books or on a flashcard and annotate your ideas around it. Pause the video and try it out. Continuing this idea, let's look at how he is thorough and observant. 
After the death of Prof Alamu, Holmes begins to investigate the crime scene. In this chapter, Holmes tells Watson to sit to one side while he makes his observations and deductions. It describes how Holmes was measuring, comparing, examining, with his long, thin nose only a few inches from the planks, and his beady eyes gleaming and deep set like those of a bird. So swift, silent and vertical were his movements, like those of a trained bloodhound picking out a scent. Measuring, comparing, examining. What technique is used here? What are the connotations of these words? His nose is inches from the planks, and Dole uses zoomorphism by saying he was like a bird and a bloodhound. What is effective about these comparisons? What line of work have bloodhounds been used in before and why? Then look at the words BD, swift and silent and vertive. These words can have negative connotations and link to suspicious behaviour. Why are we more likely linked to the suspects in the novel than Holmes himself? Why has Dole chosen to use this to describe Holmes' actions? And what does this quote show us about the way Holmes conducts his work? Pause the video and explode the quotation. While Holmes has many admiring qualities, he does have some flaws. For example, he can be prejudiced towards others from the working class and those who are seen as different, such as Tonga. When Holmes and Watson discover the suspects, Small and Tonga, have taken a boat from a dock by the River Thames, Holmes questions Mrs Smith, whose husband has gone along with Small and Tonga. He cleverly asks her if he could borrow the steam launcher, knowing that the men have likely taken it. Holmes tricks Mrs Smith into giving a full description of the men. He explains to Watson that the main thing with people of that sort never let them think that their information can be the slightest importance to you. So zooming on the phrase that sort. What sort is he referring to? Make connections to the context, AO3. What do the middle upper classes think of people from the lower and working class? What does saying never let them think tell us about their views of the working class and their intelligence? How does referring to the working class as them highlight the separation between the classes? Holmes aimed to move his case along because of the information or help of those in the working class, for example the Baker Street Irregulars. Does Holmes value their help? And why are the working class given little importance in the novel and society as a whole? Pause the video and give it a try. At the end of the novel, and the case is solved, Watson has revealed to Holmes that he will be getting married to Mary Morstan. Holmes doesn't react too kindly and gave a most dismal groan and said, I feared as much, I really cannot congratulate you, reiterating the idea of how his work will always be more important than relationships for Holmes. He does not want an emotional thing such as love to take away from cold reason, which he places above all things. He goes on to say how he would never marry. The novel ends with Watson asking what will remain for him as he is getting married and Jones got all the credit. Holmes replies with, for me, there still remains the cocaine bottle. Doyle ends the novel in the same way it started. What is this technique called? Why does he decide to end in this way? And what does it show us about Sherlock Holmes? Why is Holmes happy to remain the same while everybody else moves on? So for the last time, pause the video and give it a try. Now, why don't you try answering the following question using your annotated quotations? Starting with this extract, explore Doyle's presentation of Sherlock Holmes. Write about how Doyle presents Sherlock Holmes in this extract and how Doyle presents Sherlock Holmes in the novel as a whole. Remember when writing your PED paragraph, analyse the language in depth and detail using the explode the quote method to help you. Make a clear point, highlighting the technique and use keywords for the question. Give short embedded quotations, explain the quote in relation to the question and develop your response by unpicking the language. Educated minds are community for sharing, so why don't you share some of your ideas with other students in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And for extra help, you can contact me for tutoring options. For daily tips and updates, follow Educated Minds on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, see you.